So I uh, am Alison Castle Kane. I work for Trinity College London as the head of business development for the UK and Ireland. Uh, I've been with them for a few years now. Um, and yeah, pleased to be taking part in the ELT Ireland conference. Yeah, thanks for doing this. Um, can I start by asking you, what has Trinity's overall approach been in response to the pandemic? Sure, yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know much about Trinity, so Trinity is a, we are a registered charity. And um, of course we do English language exams, but we also do uh, music, drama and the arts. So we have a whole, we've had a whole raft of things to think about um, with the pandemic. And I'm sure a lot of companies and organizations will probably agree with me when we say that, um, kind of moving into very rapidly into a digital space was really the requirement. Um, and we probably have achieved in 12 months what might have taken years to achieve. And so in some ways it has really sort of pushed us to uh, look at our business and look at how we deliver our exams, not again, not just for English language, but also for the other subject areas. Um, I mean, really at the forefront at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we were looking at digital grades, primarily for music. So people who were you know, learning the piano or whatever instrument, how could they continue to progress? So we introduced um, digital delivery and assessment of um, our music uh, awards. And then we moved very quickly into um, video conferencing for the key exams for UK, UK visa purposes. So for those of you who don't know, Trinity uh, is one of the providers of the Secure English Language Test for UK uh, visa and immigration purposes. So that was obviously a really key part because it, it was an essential for people to stay in this country, to remain as a spouse or whatever. So. Um, those two areas were sort of the, the first focus of, of moving into that digital space. And then that was quickly followed by how do we support language schools in the UK and Ireland, who would typically take um, the JESSE exam, the graded examinations in spoken English, or the ISE exam, integrated skills in English, and how can we move that into a digital space? So we move that delivery, that video conferencing delivery, um, made that available to schools around the UK. Um, I think in the pandemic, when lockdown first started, you know, it's still very difficult for everyone. We're all still struggling to make sense of it all, but we realized that there was an enormous need for training <clears throat> and support. And, and certainly in some of the sectors that we work in, in the private language school sector, I think some schools who had already been in that online teaching space were quite comfortable and were able to carry that part of their business forward whereas I think other schools that wasn't an, a place that they competed in so they found themselves really in need of training you know how do you teach effectively using online tools um, so we did a lot of free training that's still accessible. Um, people can go back and watch some of those webinars, not just about preparing for Trinity exams, but more broadly, you know, teaching listening online. How, you know, what are some of the tools that I can use? We, we covered all the skills. We also covered multiple levels. So really useful things, no matter what you're teaching or whether you were preparing for an exam or not. And the other area that I think was very interesting for us, and we had a huge great response to it um, in the UK we support ESOL the ESOL sector so we run the skills for life exams within um, colleges and adult learning centers and one of their big challenges was I've got students who don't have laptops and computers and you know I can't meet them face to face and they have to learn on a mobile device so we did a lot of really practical sessions on how to <clears throat> deliver the same kind of lesson, but just using mobile um, and, and things that you could, you know, even WhatsApp, you know, how can I work with these learners who are 
you know, they don't have the same level of digital literacy. So we did a lot of that. And I think that was very welcome um, by a lot of people at a time when it was really needed. You know, everyone was looking for support and training. Um, and we, we, we really got in that space and, and provided quite a lot, I think. Um, so that focus on, on professional development was really key. Um, I think in terms of looking for resources from Trinity, I, I would certainly say to teachers out there, please go to our website and look at, uh, we run the Transformative Teachers webinars regularly, um, and these cover tech strands, young learner strands, English for specific purposes, English for academic purposes, and teacher education, so they're run regularly. Um, you can sign up to join those or run them, you know, watch them as recordings. And also all of those webinars that I just talked about, you can access those again, if you, you can filter the webinars by topic area um, and just use as a sort of a bank of um, resources. The other area that um, we've really been trying to kind of <clears throat> refocus our energies is TESOL. Um, and I think this is a interesting one because the market has, re, you know, people are really struggling. Um, certainly there have been school closures. There's a lot of competition for jobs. And, and I think teachers are finding themselves in this space of what do I do now? You know, upskilling, improving their prospects for the future. So, um, Last year, we launched the Certificate for Practicing Teachers, and um, this was a big one for Trinity because it, it's, um, it's a qualification that sits between certificate and diploma level, so between that kind of initial level and advanced level, where I think teachers who've been teaching for a few years maybe find themselves in a space where they're not sure what the next step is. So. Um, this is a really important development for Trinity and we're doing a lot of, um, a, a, just a lot of focus on raising awareness around the CERT PT. Um, but importantly, it's kind of accessible to everybody. I mean, you can do it online. We have many providers that do it as a fully online qualification. Um, when things change, it will probably go back to maybe a blended model or even a face-to-face -face model, but it really depends on the provider. But the CERT PT, it, it, it uses the teacher's context as a basis for the qualification. So if you are working with very young learners or you're teaching online or you're teaching corporate uh, or you're doing CLIL or we have some that's just come on for preparing uh, nurses and doctors, you can really hone in on an area that is specific to you. Um, so using your teaching context, so it makes it a very um, relevant uh, qualification for teachers. And really it's all about looking at materials in your environment. So how do I critique, adapt, um, create materials that are gonna be um, really useful in your teaching context. So I think that's a really interesting one for Trinity. Um, again, in this environment where um, teachers want to do something that's a bit more um, specific to their own circumstances, but also get that kind of next level qualification. Um, so we'll be doing a few sessions on the CERT PT in March, one on the 3rd of March and 10th of March. Um, and I'll give my details at the end if people want to just learn more about um, how it works and where you would go to, to do it, or if you're also interested in kind of beefing up your TESOL offering, that's an area where people, I think, schools are looking at additional revenue at a time where there aren't lots of students coming for short term or, you know, where they might even deliver a course completely remotely. So this is a, an interesting um, development, I think, for, for TESOL providers. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think this is a challenge for ELT Ireland to deliver the conference online, but um, we've always supported the conference and it's so important. I think even now, even more so that teachers get an opportunity to, to share their teaching practice and their experiences 
even if it's in a, a virtual environment. Um, so Trinity are always um, happy to support ELT Ireland. Um, and of course we will continue to do so in the coming years. Um, I thought it might be useful just to share my details on screen if people want to um, contact me. Um, that's me there. So um, I, again, I look after Ireland and uh, the UK and the business development unit. Um, but if you have questions about our exams or any sort of training that you might like, um, or just general assistance, those are my details there. So it's alison.castle at trinitycollege.co.uk. Um, and of course, any updates about um, when exams are running or how we're, we're adapting delivery will always be um, on the Trinity website kind of upfront there. So, yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Have Gives you a nice on. overview of what Trinity's up to, hopefully. Um, and I hope you all have a very successful conference. Thank you very much, Alison. You have uh, covered all, all of all of the, the points there that I, I wanted to ask you about. And um, can I throw in one or two questions just at the end before we wrap it up? And um, you point out one thing, which is the, the digital divide, which I think has really been made very apparent, uh, not just in the ESOL sector, but also uh, in even regular schools who have suddenly had to switch to uh, to online and the the access to learning that uh, that um, uh, suddenly is 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 complicated be, because of that. Um, that that's something that uh, kind of fits with Trinity's mission to 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 try and work with that. Have you got different initiatives to try and um, overcome that because it's a big issue? Absolutely, you know, and it's. Um, I mean, I experience. It, as a parent as well having kids and and knowing that you know it's not the same for everyone um and this is really tough um you know it, as we said in the esol sector where people they just don't have access to the same materials um and are they being you know that that that's a barrier to their learning um <clears throat> Trinity did um just launched the language access fund and we've had the access fund available for um music and the arts previously but we've now launched it for language um and this is all about trying to identify people that are experiencing barriers um and what those reasons might be um and to try and support those learners who either need access to materials or to classes um, with the ultimate aim of taking some Trinity qualification. Now we've just done the first round of the access fund um, and I, I think incredibly welcome at this time, but we've just um, had an amazing response from all people of all sorts of backgrounds, um, obviously, asylum seekers and refugees and councils that work with those types of learners, but also some really interesting projects where, um, you know, people who've settled here are maybe volunteering in, in a, a food bank. And so it's, it's trying to kind of train them to help do their work better. So you kind of get a double whammy, if you like. So there have been some really great projects. Um, we haven't awarded everything yet for this first round. Um, we're just making final decisions, but we'll have another round that opens in April. Um, again, it's, it's, it's about tackling some of these issues where um, people don't have the same opportunities. So um, that next round will be open in April. And if you just Google the Language Access Fund from Trinity, you'll find some information about that. But again, it's open to applicants from uh, the UK and Ireland. Yeah, so that was a very interesting initiative. So uh, I think it was important to, to get it <laughs> I should have spoken about it. <laughs> and the last question before, before we finish is um, something that with ELT Ireland as well, we found this, uh, that you have to kind of rediscover your, 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 your mission. And, and sometimes in a time of crisis, it's kind of a, it puts a very sharp focus on what really is important. Is that something you found in Trinity as well? 
Absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, you kind of hit the nail on the head there because Trinity, you know, our ethos is about communication and performance that runs through everything that we do. Um, and the challenge is for us is moving that into a virtual space. And, you know, even with our language exams, so much about what makes Trinity exams unique is that we assess communicative competence. So people's ability to construct dialogue and sustain dialogue and direct conversation. And that's quite different in a digital space. Um, so that's been our one of our big challenges is how do we transfer that into the digital space, which we all have to do. You know, we're all communicating regularly over video. How many Zoom calls do you have a day now? You know, this is what we do. Um, so I think this has been in in a good a good challenge for Trinity. Um, in how do we keep true to those things that make Trinity Trinity, but do it in a way that's um, responding to the pandemic and, and looking at how people need to learn and do their qualifications going forward. So um, a really pivotal point, I think for a lot of businesses, but definitely for Trinity.